My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today, I wanted to talk to you about AF and ablations, and in particular, discuss some strategies by which you can reduce the likelihood of recurrence of um, uh, AF coming back after having had an ablation. So, we know that uh, a lot of people get something called paroxysmal AF, which is AF that comes and goes. So you can be fine one minute and then you can go into an AF episode and that can be incredibly uncomfortable because it can make you feel very tired and lethargic and breathless. And for a lot of people, then they're left wondering, how do I, when will I come out of this AF episode? And although there are some medications that can help reduce this, uh, many people don't tolerate those medications because of side effects or uh, despite the medications, they continue to get these episodes. And when that happens, often people then look to having an ablation, which uh, definitely reduces the likelihood of AF happening. Now, an AF ablation is, uh, is a daunting prospect, partly because it's a procedure that can take a few hours, partly because it's invasive, and partly because it's very expensive. Uh, so one of the things that a lot of people experience after having an AF ablation is they're constantly watchful because they're worried, could the AF come back? We know that up to 40% of um, uh, patients who undergo an AF ablation will develop a recurrence of AF. And so th there is an important, um, so there, it's important to try and work out strategies that you can follow uh, to try and allow you to have a AF recurrence-free existence. I, I reduce the likelihood of the AF coming back. So I thought I'd just discuss this with you very quickly. There was a really interesting paper uh, by Andrew Darby. Let's just have a look. I'll just try and find those details. Andrew Darby, and he published in the Journal of Atrial Fibrillation uh, in 2016. Uh, and this paper was published in the June-July edition. It is on page 1,427. For references, you can look it up on Google. It's basically called Recurrent Atrial Fibrillation After Catheter Ablation, Considerations for Repeat Ablation and Strategies to Optimize Success. And one of the bits in this paper is that he talks about what you as a patient can do to try and minimize the likelihood of the AF coming back. So in particular, what is really effective is those things that could have brought the risk factors that could have led to the AF happening in the first place. You need to treat those aggressively. Okay. Uh, and so uh, what are those? Number one, it's very important to try and reduce weight, uh, particularly if you have a high BMI. The initial goal should be to reduce body weight by about 10% followed by a target BMI of less than 25 kilograms per meter square. It's important to reduce, be very aggressive with blood pressure reduction and to reduce the blood pressure to less than 130 over 80. If you have high cholesterol levels, then treating the cholesterol aggressively is a good idea because it has been shown that that reduces the likelihood of AF coming back. Also blood sugars, for a lot of people who have AF, they're also diabetic and controlling their blood sugars well uh, it can be a very valuable strategy. Um, a lot of people have something called sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea. So a ton of people who have AF also have underlying sleep apnea. 85% of sleep apnea is undiagnosed. And I would therefore always recommend that anyone who has AF, and particularly if you carry extra weight, that you undergo sleep studies. And if indeed you have sleep apnea, get that treated. Because if you treat the sleep apnea, that will reduce the recurrence of atrial fibrillation. Um, and finally, if you smoke, then um, uh, abstinence from smoking and also abstinence from alcohol can make a big difference. Although Andrew Darby doesn't mention exercise, I think uh, doing regular cardiovascular exercise is a good thing. And also uh, maintaining good quality sleep. So even if you don't have sleep apnea, if you have insomnia, etc., there is some research coming out suggesting that there may be a link between AF and insomnia. And so treating the insomnia is a really important thing as well. So I hope you found this useful. Um, as mentioned earlier, I'm going to be in New York doing a seminar on the 4th and 5th of August. Um, and you can book uh, a place for this uh, by visiting www.hearthealthweekend.com. Uh, there'll be lots of talks. Uh, I'll be talking about all the kind of th things that I talk about on my channel, like topics, AF, high, high blood pressure, etc. 
On the 5th, if you've booked early, then uh, you can reserve a spot where you can have a one-to-one -one free consultation with me. Uh, and during this period, I can listen to your particular history and give you advice uh, as I deem fit uh, on w how you should um, go forwards. Um, also, uh, it gives me great pleasure if you consider subscribe, if you subscribe to my channel and if you comment and share the videos, it makes me feel very, very happy indeed. So if you could do that, I'd be very grateful. Thank you so much. I have a Facebook page, Your Cardiology One, Y-O-R-K-C-A-R-D-I-O-L-O-G-Y One. So if you come along to Facebook, I do post lots of other videos on Facebook, which are not on YouTube. So, if, you know, if you wanted to access more videos, then that would be a good way to do so. Thank you so much for listening. All the best. Take care.